This video is going to focus on how to uh, approach reacting mass calculations and titration calculations. I'm going to use a graphical method because I think it helps to visualize what's going on here. But essentially, it always breaks down for reacting mass calculations into three simple steps. And I've got my mass and mole zone to try and emphasize those steps. But essentially, whenever you're approaching one of these calculations, for example, this one is aluminium reacting with oxygen to form aluminium oxide, they'll give you a balanced equation. They'll tell you the mass of one of the substances and ask you to to work out the mass of the other. So I've been given the mass of aluminium is 260 grams. And the question is, how much um, aluminium oxide could that produce if I started with that much um, aluminium? So you want to write in the, in the corner of your page your formula triangle for mass to mole or mole to mass conversions, which is mole is equal to mass divided by the molecular mass of a molecule, the relative formula mass of a compound, or the relative atomic mass of an uh, element. Whichever one you're dealing with will be the one at the bottom there. Uh, so, I'm going from a mass to a mole value. So I'm going from the mass zone to the mole zone. Because I'm not in the mole zone yet, I can kind of ignore these integers, these molar values, the front of these um, symbols, these front of these um, substances. I'm not going to look at those now. All I'm looking at is what is the substance and what is the mass. So I have 216 grams of aluminium. So I want to work out how many moles that is. Moles equals mass divided by, in this case, uh, the AR, the relative atomic mass. So moles equals mass divided by the relative atomic mass of aluminium, which is 216 grams, divided by the mass number from the periodic table for aluminium, which is 27. 216 divided by 27 gives us 8 moles of aluminium being used. And now the question is, how much aluminium oxide should I expect to produce if I had 8 moles of aluminium? This is where I bring in the molar ratio. And now I can, because I'm in the mole zone, I can now uh, make, acknowledge these numbers in front. So 4 moles of aluminium should react to form with oxygen to form 2 moles of aluminium oxide. That's a 4 to 2 ratio. If I simplify that ratio, it's essentially a 2 to 1 ratio. So if I know that I'll make uh, half as much aluminium oxide, if you like, or it's a 2 to 1 ratio of aluminium to aluminium oxide, if I divide my moles of aluminium by 2, that will tell me how many moles of aluminium oxide I should produce. So 8 divided by 2, followed by a ratio of 2 to 1, is 4 moles of aluminium oxide. Okay? And now I want to work out what mass 4 moles of aluminium oxide represents. So I'm going from the mole zone to the mass zone. Because I'm coming out of the mole zone, I can ignore the integers in front, because I've already dealt with those in the molar ratio. So I'm ignoring these numbers in front again. I'm just dealing with what is the mass of 4 moles of this substance. So mass, I'm here, mass is equal to moles times the RFM. So mass is moles times RFM of aluminium oxide. That's four times the relative formula mass of aluminium oxide, which is two al aluminiums and three oxygens, two times 27 for the aluminiums, three times 16 for the oxygens. So that's four times 102 being the total of those values there. Four times 102 gives me my mass of aluminium oxide. As in grams, that's going to be 408 grams. So that's an example of a uh, simple um, reacting mass calculation using a graphical method. But essentially it breaks down three steps. It's mass to moles, molar ratio, moles to mass. Great thing is it can be used in any context and in any direction. So I can even go backwards in theory. So this is me working backwards from lithium nitride back to lithium. So how much lithium nitride is made from lithium? We can say, if I know I make or have made 175 grams of lithium nitride, how much lithium was required to make this lithium nitride? Well, it's exactly the same process again. From going from mass zone to moles zone, and we're going from mass to moles, I can ignore the integers in front because they are not... Uh, Useful yet until I'm in the moles zone. I don't need to worry about the molar ratio until later. So I'm actually going to ignore the molar integers for the moment and just deal with what is the substance and what is the mass. So 175 grams of lithium nitride. And I want to work out moles. So moles equals mass divided by, in this case, RFM. So moles equals mass divided by the RFM of lithium nitride. 165 grams divided by the relative formula mass of lithium nitride, which is three lithiums, three times seven, and one nitrogen. Plus 14 for the total mass. That's 175 divided by 35, giving me currently 5 moles of lithium nitride. The question now is how many moles of lithium was required to make 5 moles of lithium nitride? Well, we can see here it's a 6 to 2 ratio in terms of lithium to lithium nitride. Simplify it down, essentially we're saying 3 to 1. 3, 3 to 1 ratio of lithium to lithium nitride. So if I times this value by 3, that ratio, I should 
um, have made that many moles of lithium nitride from 15 moles of lithium. And now I'm going from the mole zone back into the mass zone. So going from moles to mass, all you need to do is to times by the uh, relative mass of lithium. So mass equals moles times relative mass of uh, the uh, relative, atomic, relative atomic mass in this case. So mass equals moles times uh, AR, uh, 15 times seven, not I'm now ignoring the six because I've already dealt with that in the molar ratio. Also, I'm leaving the mole zone so I can ignore the molar integer in front this time. So 15 times the mass number of lithium, which is seven, gives me 105 grams of lithium. So again, uh, it's the same three steps as last time. It's mass to moles, the molar ratio, moles to mass. We can also have a go at a titration calculation. These are usually the back of paper, uh, paper one questions, and they often scare people because they look quite intimidating initially. But I'm going to try and simplify this down and make it um, as simple as possible. So you're always given the balanced equation, and the question will look like this. Give me a second to read that. So the important thing here is to spot details from this question. Which one do we know the most information about? So for the sulfuric acid, you can see that's here, which is this substance here, this acid here, we have two pieces of information. We have a concentration and we have a volume. Whereas for the potassium hydroxide, which is the alkali represented here, we only have one piece of information, which is a volume. So which one do we start with? Well, we're going to start with the one we know the most information about, which is the sulfuric acid in this example. That's our starting point. That's where we enter this calculation from. Now, it's a different formula triangle this time. We use, we're working out concentrations. So concentration equals moles over volume. Concentration is equal to the mole divided by the volume in decimeters. A decimeter is essentially the chemical speak for a litre. There are a thousand centimetres cubed in one decimeter cube. So therefore, to convert centimetres cubed values into decimeter cubed values, you must divide by a thousand. And that's the thing people always forget, to convert these centimetre cubed volumes into decimeters cubed by dividing these values by a thousand. Keep that in mind for later. So, step one after the balance equation in the calculation is to work out the moles of the thing we know the concentration of. And that would be the sulfuric acid because we can see it has a concentration here. And I can convert a volume and a concentration into um, a molar value. So moles, as you can see here, is equal to concentration times volume. So that's this calculation here for the known concentration, which in this case is the sulfuric acid. But my volume is wrong. It's in the wrong uh, magnitude of unit. It's uh, in centimeters cubed and actually both the concentration and the volume need to be in decimeters cubed or measured against decimeters cubed. So if I divide 30 by 1,000, I convert this centimeters cubed value here into a decimeters cubed value, and then I can roll on with my calculation. So moles equals concentration times volume. So if I times the concentration and volume together, I get 0 0.045 moles of sulfuric acid. Now I'm being asked to work out the moles of the unknown concentration, i.e. the moles of the thing I didn't know the concentration of initially. That's the um, potassium hydroxide because I've only got a volume. And now I'm going to come to the molar ratio again. So I can see from this balanced equation that there's no number in front of this, this HSO4, this sulfuric acid. So one mole of sulfuric acid reacts always with two moles of potassium hydroxide. That's a one to two ratio of the sulfuric acid to the potassium hydroxide. So what am I going to do to work out the concentration of my unknown? If I times that value for the moles previously by 2, I can work out the moles of the sodium hydroxide. So it would seem that that's 0.045 times 2, which is 0.09 moles of the potassium hydroxide. Just notice that I've flipped the potassium to a sodium for no reason. Apologies. Now, the final thing I can work out now is the concentration of the unknown concentration. That was a bit weird there, but obviously the, the, I can now work out the concentration of the thing I don't know the concentration of, which is the potassium hydroxide. How do I do that? 
well, concentration is equal to moles over volume in decimeters. And again, don't forget to convert that centimeters cubed value to decimeters, otherwise you've got the wrong magnitude of unit here for carrying on this calculation. So the volume of the potassium hydroxide was 25 centimeters cubed. 25 centimeters cubed needs to be converted into decimeters cubed. So 25 divided by 1,000 becomes 0 0.025 decimeters cubed. At that point, we can carry on with the calculation. Concentration equals moles over volume. The moles from the previous section is 0 0.09 divided by 0 0.025, the volume of decimeters cubed, giving us 3.6 moles per decimeter cubed of product, which in this case, uh, of, um, of, sorry, not product, of potassium hydroxide, which is uh, the uh, problem we were being asked to solve. So it breaks down into a few key steps for titration, balanced equation, Moles of the known concentration, look for the one you have the most information about. Make sure you convert the centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed for the volume, giving you a molar value there. Look at the molar ratio to work out the moles of the unknown concentration, and then carry that through to the final concentration stage. Concentration equals moles over volume in decimeters cubed, and again, divide any centimeters cubed values by 1,000 to convert them to decimeters before you finish off the calculation. If this number is huge, you've probably made a mistake. If this molar value, this molar decimeter cubed value at the end for the concentration of whatever substance you're looking for, it gets above sort of 10, then chances are you've forgotten to divide by 1,000 for one of those, uh, con one of those uh, volumes, and that's why this is... Uh, gone wrong. So just be careful. Always double check every calculation before you roll on through.